You're watching WKRC-TV, Channel 12, Cincinnati. This is the Eyewitness 12 News Weekend Report. With anchor Rob Braun. Weather with Dan Royal. And sports with Dan Brady. Good evening, I'm John Lomax, sitting in for Rob Braun. It's 6 o'clock in Cincinnati, and here's what's happening tonight. A chemical spill at a nuclear facility is perhaps one of our worst fears. Today, that fear was acted out. Civil Defense Forces from Hamilton and Butler counties worked with Westinghouse officials to battle a mock chemical spill at Fernal. As Eyewitness 12's Pam Regas reports, the drill was so true to life, not even those taking part knew what would happen next. At 10.40 today, emergency sirens sounded at the Fresnel Geranium Processing Plant. The chemical accident was not real, but was treated with every bit of caution, quickness, and intelligence a real disaster would command. The purpose is to make sure that the counties and the state and FMPC are trained to handle any type of emergency at the plant and to make sure, as far as the JPIC, that the public and the media are aware of what activities are going on. The scenario. A pipeline ruptures, leaking 3,000 gallons of hydrogen fluoride, a chemical that can burn and blind. A badly burned man is rushed to University Hospital by air care. Then the driver of an emergency vehicle has a stroke. His truck then crashes into three pipelines, leading to a 14,000 gallon ammonia tank. In very, very large concentration, there could be a collapse of the respiratory system, which would result you would stop breathing. Together, the fatal ammonia and hydrogen fluoride are highly flammable, and with the wind, the toxic chemicals leave the plant site. Three schools are evacuated, neighbors are not. They are told to stay inside and keep their ventilation systems closed so they won't breathe the toxic chemicals. Meanwhile, emergency crews work frantically to gain control of the situation. The first leak of HF uh, was contained by putting a... Um, sleeve around the, the tank and that's a new procedure that they're working on now and the second one the, the ammonia tank uh, they were not able to to contain that and um, the tank just emptied two things happen from here first of all evaluators who watch today's drill will draw up a report making recommendations on how to improve the emergency response out here and secondly the public gets to critique the drill this monday evening at crosby elementary school at Fernald, Pam Regis, Eyewitness 12 News. The body of a 32-year-old Montgomery man was discovered this morning by firefighters in Colerain Township as they put out a fire in the man's car. Hamilton County Sheriff's officials say Joseph Gessner died of apparent smoke asphyxiation from the car fire around 4.30 this morning. Gessner is known to have been drinking at the Sly Fox Bar at Colerain Avenue in Springdale. That's where his car was found, and Gessner was found a short time later behind the wheel of the vehicle. Investigators say an apparent engine malfunction ignited the car. A Butler County jury has spared a Hamilton man the death penalty in a murder which occurred last fall. James Coleman has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter instead of aggravated murder in the shooting death of Donald Wysong. Wysong was shot to death by a man wearing a mask last October. Defense attorneys claim that mask hit another man, not Coleman. Prosecutors said Coleman did shoot Wysong because the victim was selling drugs to Coleman's girlfriend. Coleman has also been convicted of aggravated robbery in connection with the death. He'll be sentenced June 5th. Union Township Police in Butler County are asking for your help in locating the driver of a car which struck a teenager then left the scene of the accident. Police say a 14-year-old girl was struck on King's Gate Way around 10.30 last night. The girl is in satisfactory condition at Bethesda Hospital. Her name has not yet been released. If you have any information about the car, the driver, or the accident, Call Union Township Police at 777-5216. That number again is 777-5216. Up next, Tri-Staters join thousands in a march on the nation's capital, while here at home, the focus this weekend is on making the Queen City a clean city. We'll have details when we come back. Here at Still Pass Honda, we always try to sell every Honda from $300 to $800 less than any other dealer for the same exact model. Here's proof, brand new Civic four doors with automatic transmission at no additional cost, as low as $159.71 a month. Accords with automatic from just $169.38 a month. And these are just samples. 
no matter which Honda model you want, no matter where you live in the tri-state area, even a hundred or more miles away, it's worth a trip to still pass Honda on Coal Range, just south of Northgate Mall, Cincinnati. One unforgettable Saturday at the Silver Bullet. Excuse me, Bob, please. He's over there. Where's light, Lou? <laughs> Bob, you finally got a job. We'd like for you and your spouse to please move out of the house. Good luck, love, mom and dad. Yeah. Hey, she's not bad. And he's not Bob. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. More than 75,000 people converged on the nation's capital today for a protest of the Reagan administration's foreign policy. And as Scott Feldman reports, six busloads of tri-staters braved cold rains for the rally. The faces of protest. They came by buses, planes, and trains for one of the largest demonstrations in Washington since the late 60s. Back then, of course, it was Vietnam. Today, it's a protest of U.S. policy in Central America, South Africa, and the arms race. Prominent voices would sing out. Prominent voices would speak out. Reverends Jesse Jackson, William Sloan Coffin, Daniel Ellsberg. And Cincinnati voices were heard. College students counter to the popular label of self-centered and uncaring. What's brought me out here is the United States supporting violence in Central America and supporting apartheid in South America, supporting institutionalized racism. That's what's brought me out here. That's what upsets me. The student movement's definitely building. You can um, there's see the results of it. If you could look at Colombia with the recent protests and rallies there, if you look at uh, if you look at Amherst, if you look at University of Minnesota, the CIA is no longer recruiting on those campuses. Union power flexed its muscle. And every dollar that goes to the Contras that is used for terrorist activities, blowing up health care centers, could much better be spent uh, right here in the United States building health care centers. And church groups were passionately involved. It seems to me it's backwards. In a sense, we're demanding of people a sense of, of justice before we give them the peace in our, and to allow them to be able to put into effect what, uh, what they could do. And, and most of the people that I represent believe that they would bring about a, a more just society if they were left alone. After the rally, with the most familiar faces leading the way, demonstrators marched past the White House on to the Capitol. Confident with a new Congress and a wounded administration, this day would attract more than attention. It would produce action. Scott Feldman, Eyewitness 12 News, Washington. A scandalous sexual encounter involving the former president of PTL Ministries has prompted a lawsuit. PTL Ministries is being sued for $601 million by a Columbus, Ohio family. The suit alleges that former PTL president Jim Baker illegally used contributions to pay a former secretary to keep quiet about a sexual encounter she had with him. The suit was filed yesterday by three members of a family who say they contributed nearly $12,000 to PTL. Meanwhile, an internal investigation has uncovered more wrongdoings at PTL. New allegations say Baker used prostitutes, engaged in homosexual acts, and that some members swapped spouses. Cincinnatians are typically attracted to their local parks when the weather is as pleasant as it was today. But hundreds of area volunteers plan to spend the day at the park, regardless of the weather, for a very worthy cause. Eyewitness 12's Beverly White has that story. Armed with paintbrushes, hammers, and elbow grease, these legions of local volunteers waged war on months of garbage and neglect throughout the park system today. Fifteen area parks, including this one, Washington Park, were targeted for extra attention above and beyond what the park budget can provide. It not only gets work done, but it creates a camaraderie in the community that cares about their park. They suddenly realize, oh my gosh, it takes a lot of work to keep the park up. Perhaps no other community could use that shot in the arm more than over the Rhine. It's here that organizers say neighbors can learn plenty from the examples set in the parks. The image of over the Rhine is kind of like, well, it's a ghetto, and it's uh, for the lower classes and uh, uh, bums, drunkards, and a whole lot of other things. We're not all that, and we don't have to have that image. And if we're poor, we have dignity, and we are clean, and we want to be proud of our area. I think it's everybody's duty to help in the community, and this is why I'm out here. 
Councilman Peter Strauss even joined in for the day-long project, and insiders say they still left some jobs undone. It's just very time-consuming work to t disassemble the benches, get them painted, um, prepare the surfaces and stuff. So. As the weather improves and more people take to the outdoors, volunteers say everyone will reap the benefits of Green Up Day. And maybe, just maybe, they'll be motivated to take part when Green Up Day rolls around next year. Beverly White, Eyewitness 12 News. While we're on the subject of cleanup campaigns, the spirit of spring cleaning didn't stop today at the park district boundaries. Phase two of Brighton Up Cincinnati kicked in this morning for a large-scale garbage roundup of 10 northwest neighborhoods. Camp Washington and Northside were among the area serviced by today's clean sweep, the second in a series of five. Two weeks ago, volunteers scooped up more than two million pounds of trash in the central part of the city. The Super Saturday Blitz will continue on subsequent weekends until every neighborhood is included. Weather's next, Steve Horsmeyer has details on the second half of a beautiful weekend. And they came from all walks of life today to say goodbye to a piece of their last, their past, rather. The tale's coming up next. Commuter traffic is real slow going. Black the Angus way has a happy Everybody ending for everyone who's had lane. one of those days. Announcing Alaskan snow crab legs. Tender and succulent, alongside a juicy top sirloin steak complete with a fresh salad and a steamy baked potato. And at Black Angus, it's all for just $7.95. But not for long. Your rubberneckers are still slowing the So make tonight's dinner the best part of a hard day. Heart surgery. To perform it, doctors need vital information. At an IBM scientific center in England, computer researchers and doctors are transforming x-rays into three-dimensional models of a patient's arteries and beating heart. This experimental project is an example of innovation at IBM. And it could be another way computers help doctors save lives. Weekdays at four, don't miss the fight of the century. Is that supposed to be cologne you wear? Yeah, you like it? What's it called? Evening in a freight car? It's Florence versus George. Now, Mr. Jefferson is so ugly that when he used to work in a bakery, they used to dip his face in the batter to make the animal cook. But who will get in the last punch? When I was in high school, I was voted Miss Personality. Who'd you run against, Godzilla? Don't miss an hour of the Jeffersons, weekdays at 4 on Channel 12. It's the end of the month. Our warehouses are overloaded. More merchandise is on the way. Steinberg's is forced to move inventory immediately. So you'll save on this RCA VHS VCR with wireless remote control, just $268. Steinberg's end of month clearance, now through Thursday. Because when it's all added up, it's the savings that count. A 50-year tradition of higher education is coming to an end. Xavier University has sold its Edgecliff campus to Ewing Industries. Today, the Alumni Association of Xavier gathered together to take a few last looks. Tugs at one's heartstrings. I understand it economically, but coming back here is, uh, it's kind of wrenching, you know, to think that it won't, that you won't be welcome to come back here, maybe, after it becomes something else. The campus includes eight buildings and 14 acres of land. Our Lady of Cincinnati, Opened their doors in 1937. Students from this campus will be moved to Xavier's campus beginning next semester. A farewell dinner is taking place tonight at the Hyatt Regency. Same beautiful area. Pass. It is a very beautiful area of mm -hmm. town. Steve Horsmeyer here with the weather. And Steve, uh, it approximated a perfect spring day today. Mm -hmm. Dare we hope for the same tomorrow. <laughs> Actually, today was almost perfect. Tomorrow will be almost more perfect. So pretty good looking coming on. All right, I'm glad to hear that. Right now in Cincinnati, skies are still crystal clear out there. Temperature is on the pleasant side, 65 degrees. As John said, that's almost perfect. With that humidity way down there at 25%, low humidity has let, let things cool off overnight, so we expect a chilly night tonight. Barometric pressure, 30.19 inches. We're looking at uh, winds from the north at 10, no precipitation. River level, 31.6 feet, and the river is slowly falling. I'm going to first of all take a look at the satellite picture, and you're going to see that behind me, just what you see out your window is what the satellite picture shows, no clouds around the immediate tri-state. Now, with low humidity and no clouds over the tri-state, as the sun sets tonight, it's going to chill off pretty quickly, so if you're going out this evening, you're going to want to take a jacket along. 
But you notice no clouds way back to the west, so it looks like tomorrow is going to be pretty sunny. All this controlled by this high pressure system. Notice where you see a low pressure system or a front, you see a few clouds. But under the high pressure system from the Gulf Coast all the way up into Canada, things are looking pretty clear. Now the future of our weather is controlled by this high pressure system and the key is going to be the southerly winds that you find to the west of this high pressure system and those winds are going to make things a little bit warmer. As a matter of fact, you're going to see warmer temperatures all the way to the west of us and slowly this warmer air will move eastward. Now we know it's going to be warmer but the question is how much warmer? Well you can see Cincinnati's temperature right now is 65 degrees. Tomorrow's weather is coming from St. Louis, 72 and Monday's weather is coming from the Kansas City area and right now in Kansas City, it's 80. So tomorrow near 72 and near 80 on Monday, things are looking very, very nice. Now, what about the weather forecast? Well, the future back on Monday, if I move out of the way, you can see it a little bit better here. This front's coming our way, and that will bring in the possibility of some shower activity, and that probably getting here Monday night. And behind that front, somewhat cooler air. So here's how it goes. For tomorrow, a little bit warmer. Monday night, a few showers. During the day, Monday should be pretty nice. And then Tuesday, cooling off just a little bit as this front comes through and brings us somewhat cooler air. Let's go on and look at the record book. Today's high was very nice at 65 degrees, low this morning 41, normally 68 and 45. The record high was 88, set back in 1960, record low 26 back in 1919. Here's the AccuWeather forecast for tonight, clear and chilly. Lows will range from 35 in outlying areas to 40 in town, so tomorrow morning on your way to church or wherever you're going in the morning, you're going to need a jacket. Sunny and very nice tomorrow. Look at this, John, 72. Sunday night, a uh, bit on the cool side. Lows 40 to 45. And then for Monday, we're looking at partly cloudy and warmer weather. High about 77. And Monday night could bring some showers before it cools off on Tuesday. So the guess the best news is that tomorrow there's absolutely nothing wrong with the weather. It's going to be perfect, just as you said. I'll take a dozen, uh, wrap them <laughs> up uh, in any size. And for those of you who are wondering about the location, of the background for our weather statistics. That is a live shot from River Downs Racetrack. Beautiful. It is really beautiful. Makes you think of the times when you were a little kid when it was real warm outside, you wanted to run through the sprinkler, you know? But mom never <laughs> let you. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Steve. Up next on the Weekend Report, sports with Walt Mayer, who looks at the preparations for the run for the roses. That's coming up next. Done it, brought to you by Prudential. Winning gold medals in successive Olympics is a rare enough occurrence, but can you name the only athlete to ever win a gold medal in four consecutive Olympics? Who done it? Choosing a life insurance policy can make anyone feel helpless. You're at the mercy of strangers. Your hands are tied. You feel pressured. But help is never too far away. With Prudential, your agent has the time to talk to you, listen to you, and work with you until you have a piece of the rock you're comfortable with. No wonder more people choose Prudential for life insurance than any other company. You'll feel right by the rock. Prudential Life Insurance. From 56 to 68, he won gold medals in four consecutive Olympics, the only athlete ever to do so. The Dean of the Discus, Al Order. I've been traveling all over the country trying to find a pizza hut that can't deliver a personal pan pizza for lunch within five minutes. Because if they can't deliver a personal pan pizza for lunch within five minutes, your next one's free. Guaranteed. <laughs> 451. It's great to get something for nothing, isn't it? 454. Oh, uh, Mr. Hall, your pizza's here. Yeah, I knew that. Still looking for a free lunch at Pizza Hut. I'm Rich Hall. Now at Kmart. A new dimension of sight, sound, and value. Scotch EG all-purpose video cassettes, the popular choice for today's VCR recording. Now with patented time left gauge to ensure that your recording never comes up short. Now only $4.47. And right now buy three EG video cassettes and receive a $2 manufacturer's rebate. Sale ends Saturday at Kmart, America's favorite store. Walt Mayer here with sports. And Walt, you went to Keeneland for the bluegrass stakes, and you're going to Louisville for the Kentucky Derby. Naturally. Naturally. Sure. <laughs> just push Brady out of the way. The, the Pooh yeah. goes. Absolutely. How's the family? Huh? Oh, just my That's great. That's great. Everything is super. The Kentucky Derby picture is getting a little muddier. It really is. You know, one, Last year, you know, the shoe with Ferdinand, uh, he was aboard Ferdinand, you know, winning that race at mm -hmm. age 54, becoming the oldest jockey ever to win the Kentucky Derby. 
The horse now he's going to be riding apparently is out of the picture, John. That's, that's bad news. Well, the Kentucky Derby a week from today at Churchill Downs and two horses in all probability out of the picture. One of them, the sentimental favorite, certainly, Temperate Sill, the Santa Anita Derby winner. It was Sill who was to carry trainer Charlie Whittingham. He's 74. And jockey Bill Shoemaker hopes for a second straight derby win. Developed a cough and slight fever. Whittingham said there was a 70% chance that his horse will not run next Saturday. Temperate Sill won't be able to train for 10 days. Talonum, winner of the Flamingo now, and part of that Wayne Lucas trained entry of three horses is probably out too. Talonum was not 100% after a gallop this morning at Churchill Downs. Well, now it was Temperate Sill, an easy winner in the Santa Anita with Bill Shoemaker in the irons. A year ago, Shoemaker, then 54, became the oldest man to win the first jewel of racing's triple crown. Shoemaker has five victories in the Kentucky Derby, a mark he shares with Eddie Arcaro and Bill Hartack. He was hoping to break that mark aboard Temperate Sill. And now, of course, that prospect does not look encouraging. At least he will not be aboard Temperate Sill. Perhaps he will have another horse. You can almost bet on that. Four Triple Crown nominees in the field of eight this afternoon for the grade three derby trial stakes at Churchill Downs. This afternoon, the action here on TV 12 and ABC. There you see on the line with Pat Day in the saddle showing his heels to everybody else in the stretch run to win the trial by seven lengths. He may have a spot in the derby. Dean Wayne Lucas horse. No More Flowers was second. He ran out of gas on the outside. And Contractor's Tune was a third horse in the Derby trial this afternoon. Well, now it was certainly a gorgeous day to be outdoors anywhere. The action at River Downs Racetrack this afternoon, opening its 60-second season of racing, kicking off the uh, spring-summer meet, a 117-day program along the Ohio. Joining us now, if we can bring him in, we have Jack... Hanessian, the general manager at River Downs Racetrack. Good afternoon, Jack. Good afternoon, Walt. It's a beautiful day out here at River Downs. They're loading the horses in. For Jack, the... your, your thoughts, <laughs> uh, your thoughts, Jack, on, uh, on this upcoming meet. You got some uh, big changes for us? Well, we've got uh, a lot of improvements in our stable area. We've got five $100,000 races this year, and we're off to an upbeat start for the 1987 season. Well, I'll tell you, Jack, this, of course, comes at an appropriate time for you after some adversity in 1986. I know you don't want to think about that with that Potomac fever and a host of other problems out there. So this, you greet this, huh? Yes, we greet the season. We have some good news on that front. The, uh, the uh, veterinarians have come up with a, uh, a vaccine which should be marketed by the middle of May uh, for that disease. But we've taken every precaution we can. We've done improvements in the barn area to keep it at a minimum. Now, Jack... Uh, Jack, you're going to have racing six days out there. The dark day is Tuesday. Is that right? That's correct. There's racing every day, ten races each day. And next week we uh, will have the Kentucky Derby here at River Downs as well uh, yeah. through simulcast. Yeah. And, of course, <laughs> I know you're going to have those exotic races, huh? Well, we've got our twin trifecta. We had two lucky winners that won over $32,000 here today in the twin trifecta. Uh, we've got uh, the pick six and... Uh, the exactas and the quinellas and the daily doubles as well as the regular wagering. Jack, thank uh, you so much for joining Walt, us live. Uh, much you, success for a great season. Thank okay, you very Jack, much, Walt. Jack and Essie and the general manager at River Downs Racetrack. On the Major League Baseball front, well, the Reds will try to make it three in a row tonight. They'll take on the Houston Astros in the Dome. First pitch is set for 8, 835. Ted Power down to work for the Reds. For the Astros, it's going to be fireballing Nolan Ryan. More on last night's uh, win now in just a moment now. This afternoon, well, we have some action this afternoon. Can we see some action? Other games today in the National League this afternoon. Can we see some games here with St. Louis playing uh, New York this afternoon? The Mets, they were losers. Well, this was last night's action. The last night's action, of course. But well, what do we got here? What action do we have here this afternoon? Oh, well, this is the Yankees game this afternoon. Okay. All right. <laughs> what action have we got here this afternoon? <laughs> Looks like we're going to get a strike out of here. Well, that's going to end that ball game. It was looked like big. That looked like big Dave Winfield striking out there. That's an excellent piece of relief work right there. Well, the Atlanta Braves, uh, the Atlanta Braves over the San Francisco Giants this afternoon. That score was five to three, and that is good news as far as the Cincinnati Reds are concerned because a win tonight with the Reds now, and they'll have sole position of first place in that National League West. The Chicago Cubs, if we can see some other scores here, they beat Montreal. That final score was nine to four this afternoon. Other scores, let's roll them here this afternoon. 
Well, we're going to see St. Louis. St. Louis, they keep winning. I don't know how they do it. They beat the New York Mets. That score is 3-2. Uh, to two. I don't know how they do it. They've got a lot of injuries, but they must be doing it with mirrors, John. But McGrain was a winning pitcher, and Aguilera was a loser for the New York Mets this afternoon. So much <laughs> for the world sport. Okay, Walter. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Stay with us. This is my lava machine. And this is my lava machine. New lava liquid. In 30 years of working with my hands, I've never used a hand cleaner like it. The power of pumice in a liquid. Feel it. Powering away dirt, grease, just about anything. Powering hands clean. I'm Roger Gustin. Friend, when I talk power, I know what I'm talking about. Lava. New liquid and traditional bar. Powers hands clean. You get the rich taste of chocolate in every little lick when you get to the bottom of a new drumstick. You taste ice cream and peanuts with a really different kick when you get to the bottom of a new drumstick. We light a sugar cone with chocolate, fill it with real ice cream, top it with more chocolate and fresh roasted peanuts. Open up the carton and take your pick and get to the bottom of a new drumstick. Benton Harbor, Michigan. What do people eat when there's no time to eat? Let's find out. I see you work at a burger place, but you're having a personal pan pizza for Pizza Hut. Well, I only got a half hour, so I come here, order, and five minutes later, I'm eating pizza. Give me, like, three adjectives that describe your reaction to personal pan pizza. Real, real good. What have we learned from Benton Harbor Originese? That even when there's no time for lunch, there's still time for Pizza Hut. I'm Rich Hall. The new Chevy Nova is completely different from the old Chevy Nova from years ago. The fact that the new Chevy Nova is the product of a joint venture is new. Its six-year, 60,000-mile warranty is new. The fact that 95% of all Nova owners would recommend it is new. So, if everything about the new Chevy Nova is new, why'd we give it the same name as the old Chevy Nova? Because we like the name. The heartbeat of America, that's today's Chevrolet. Tis the season for tying the knot, and one wedding in particular touched the hearts of the Eyewitness 12 News family today. By the authority of the Archdiocese of the State of Ohio, I pronounce you man and wife. All right. Okay. 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 Eyewitness 12 News anchor Kit Andrews and her fiancé Mike were married today at the Immaculata Church in Mount Adams. The newlyweds will return to Cincinnati following their honeymoon. And that's all our time for now. We'll see you tonight at 11 for the late edition of Eyewitness 12 News.